How to love without attachment? There was a once young who lived in Manus in the mud. He has been there since he was when his parents came to the monk as a monk. He learned the teachings of the Buddha and followed the rules of the monastery. He had shaved his head, worn the orange robe, and changed the secret method. He meditated for hours every day, trying to calm his mind, obtain an he was a good and obedient but he was also curious, was also and, curious and restless. He often wondered what the world outside the world was like. He had heard stories of cities and villages, of forests and rivers, of animals and people. He had heard stories of love and happiness, of sorrow and pain, and of 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 pain, and of
not to you harm to her, not to hit people, not to, her, not to be her, he learned to love her, not, not to love her, her, not to push her. He said that he found peace and joy in his heart. He said that he was no longer dependent on her for his happiness. For his he said that he was free to love free anyone and anything, love anything without, anything, expecting, without anything expecting anything in return. Anything. He said that he was in love, he was not attached. Not attached. He concluded by he telling the young mom that this the was young the, true meaning, the true meaning of love. He said that love he was not a feeling, love, but a state of being. State of being. He said that love he was said not attachment, love not but attachment. attachment. He said that love was not something that you have or own, but something that you are or become. The young monk was moved by the Zen master's story and thanked him for his teaching. He said that he understood now what love was and how the love was not attachment. He said that he would try to apply this lesson to his own life and practice. The Zen master smiled Zen master and blessed, smiled the, young blessed the young monk. He said that he was he glad to have met him and hoped that he would him find him happiness, happiness and enlightenment. And, and he said that he had to leave now, but that he would always remember. Always remember. He said that he, he loved him without, loved attachment. without attachment. The young monk bowed and bid monk farewell bowed to the Zen master. master. He watched him as he, he walked him away, disappeared into the horizon. He felt a warm and gentle sensation, gentle in, his sensation in his chest. He realized that he loved the Zen Master without attachment. without attachment. He returned to his room he and sat on his cushion. He closed his eyes and he focused on his breath. He felt a calm and clear state of mind. He felt a connection and compassion for all living beings. He felt a gratitude and joy for everything that he had. He felt the love and freedom for himself and others. He felt that he was in love without attachment. He opened his eyes and looked at the wall. He saw a painting of the Buddha that hung there. He saw the serene and radiant expression on the Buddha's face. He saw the wisdom and compassion in the Buddha's eyes. He saw the love and detachment that he had in his heart. He saw the serene and radiant expression on the Buddha's face. He saw the love and detachment that he had in his heart. He saw the serene and radiant expression on the Buddha's face. He saw the love and detachment that he had in his heart. He saw the serene and radiant expression on the Buddha's face. He saw the love and detachment that he had in his heart. He saw the serene and radiant expression on the Buddha's face. He saw the love and detachment that he had in his heart. He saw the serene and radiant expression on the Buddha's face. The story teaches us a valuable lesson about the true meaning of love. Love is not a feeling, but a state of being. Love is not a feeling, but a state of being. Love is not something that you have or own, but something that you are or become. Love is not dependent on others, but on yourself. Love is not selfish, but selfless. Love is not suffering. So freedom. freedom. Love is not paradox, is not but, paradox harmony. but harmony. I invite you to reflect on this lesson and apply it to your, your, your own, own life and relationships. How can you love without How can love without attachment? How can you be free How to love anyone and anything without expecting anything, anything in return? Without expecting How can you be in love, How can be not, love attached? not attached? I hope that this video this will help you to find peace and joy in your heart and, and to share it with others. I hope that you will love yourself and others without attachment. May you be blessed with the wisdom and compassion of Buddha. May you be free from the suffering and ignorance of attachment. May you be filled with the peace and joy of attachment. May you be open to the love and freedom of being. May you be generous and kind to yourself and others. May you be mindful and aware of your thoughts and emotions. May you be grateful and joyful for everything you have. May you be in love, not attached, but free. May you be happy and in love, not attached. May you be well and happy. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any of our upcoming wisdom stories. You can also. He had been there since he was a child. When his parents had given him to the monks as an offering, he had learned the teachings of the Buddha and followed the rules of the monastery. He had shaved his head, worn the orange robes, and chanted the sacred mantra. He had meditated for hours every day, trying to calm his mind and attain enlightenment. He was a good and obedient monk, but he was also curious and restless. He often wondered what the world outside the monastery was like. He had heard stories of cities and villages, of forests and rivers, of animals and people. And animal and people. He had heard stories he of love stories and happiness, of, love of sorrow and pain, sorrow and of pain, birth and death. And death. He had never seen never or experienced, experienced any of these things for himself. Of for himself. He felt that there was he something, missing, something in missing in his life. He was especially curious, especially about, the curious about the meaning of love. He had read in the scriptures that scripture love was the highest virtue, the, highest the most sublime state of mind, the ultimate goal of all beings. Of being.
He had also read that love was the cause of suffering, the root of ignorance, the obstacle to liberation. He was confused and intrigued by this paradox. He wanted to know what love really was and how the love without attachment. He had asked his fellow monks and his teachers about love, but they had given him vague and contradictory answers. Some had said that love was a noble and compassionate feeling, that it was the expression of the Buddha nature within oneself and others. Others had said that love was in the root of its selfish emotion, that it was the expression of the ego and its desires. Some had said that love was a natural and inevitable phenomenon, that it was the result of karma and the interdependence of all things. Others had said that love was an unnatural and avoidable phenomenon, that it was the result of ignorance and the illusion of self and others. The young monk was not satisfied with any of these answers. He felt that none of them captured the essence of love. He felt that none of them explained how to love without attachment. He felt that none of them helped him to understand his own feelings and thoughts. He felt that he needed to find his own answer, his own way of love. One day, he had a chance to meet the Zen Master who was visiting the monastery. The Zen Master was an old man who had traveled the world and had many stories to tell. He had studied with various teachers and schools of Buddhism. He had practiced different methods and techniques of meditation. He had experienced many states and stages of consciousness. He had attained a high level of wisdom and insight. He was respected and revered by many people, but he was also humble and simple. He had a gentle and cheerful demeanor and a twinkle in his eye. The young monk was fascinated by the Zen master and asked him to teach him about love. The Zen master agreed to share his wisdom with the young monk, but warned him that love was not what he thought it was. He told him that love was not a feeling, but a state of being. He said that love was not something that you have or own, but something that you are or become. He explained that love was not attachment, but detachment. He said that attachment was the source of suffering because it made you cling to things that are impermanent and elusive. He said that detachment was the way to freedom because it allowed you to see things as they are and let them go. He illustrated his point by telling the young monk the story of his own past. He said that when he was younger, he fell in love with a woman who was beautiful and kind. He wanted to marry her and spend his life with her. He thought that she was his soulmate and that he could not live without her. However, one day she left him for another man. He was devastated and felt betrayed. He became angry and bitter. He wanted to take revenge on her and make her suffer. He lost he lost his peace and happiness. He said that he was attached to her, not in love with her. He said that he realized his mistake when he met his teacher, who was a great Zen master. His teacher taught him how to practice meditation and mindfulness. He taught him how to observe his thoughts and emotions without judging them or identifying with them. He taught him how to let go of his attachment and resentment. He said that he learned to love the woman without attachment. He learned to appreciate her for who she was, not for what he wanted her to be. He learned to wish her well, not to harm her. He learned to be happy for her, not to envy her. He learned to love her, not to possess her. He said that he found peace and joy in his heart. He said that he was no longer dependent on her for his happiness. He said that he was free to love anyone and anything without expecting anything in return. He said that he was in love, not attached. He concluded by he telling the young monk that this was the true meaning of, true meaning of love. He said that love said was not a feeling, not but a state, being, of being. a state of being. He said that love was said not love attachment, was not but detachment. Not detachment. He said that love he was not something that you have or own, but something that you are or become. The young monk was moved by the Zen master's story and thanked him for his teaching. He said that he understood now what love was and how to love without attachment. He said that he would try to apply this lesson to his own life and practice. The Zen master smiled and blessed the young monk. He said that he was glad to have met him and hoped that he would find happiness and enlightenment.
And he said that he had to leave now, leave but that now, he would always remember, always remember him. him. He said that he loved he him that without, him attachment. without attachment. The young monk bowed the young and bid farewell to the Zen master. He master. watched him as he watched walked away walk and disappeared, away, into, disappeared the into the horizon. He felt a warm and like gentle, warm, sensation, gentle in sensation in his chest. chest. He, realized he realized that he loved the Zen master without attachment. He returned to his room and sat on his cushions. He closed his eyes he and focused his on his breath. Focus on his he felt a calm and clear state of mind. He felt the connection, the connection and compassion and for all living beings. He felt the gratitude and joy for everything that he had. He felt the love and freedom for himself and others. He felt that he was in love without attachment. He opened his eyes and looked at the wall. He saw a painting of the Buddha that hung there. He saw the serene and radiant expression on the Buddha's face. He saw the wisdom and compassion in the Buddha's eyes. He saw the love and detachment in the Buddha's heart. He smiled and bowed to the painting. He said to himself, I love you without attachment. I hope that you like the story of the young monk and the Zen master and that you found master. it helpful and inspiring. Exactly. The story teaches the story us a valuable teacher, lesson about, about the true meaning, about the of, true love. meaning of love. Love is not a feeling, love is but a state, of being. a state of being. Love is not attachment, not but detachment. Love, detachment. love is not something that you have or own, but something, something that you are that or you become. Are become. Love is not dependent on others, but on yourself. Love is not selfish, but selfless. Love is not suffering, but freedom. Love is not paradox. But harmony. I invite you to reflect on this lesson and apply it to your own life and relationships. How can you love without attachment? How can you be free to love anyone and anything without expecting anything in return? How can you be in love, not attached? I hope that this video will help you to find peace and joy in your heart and to share it with others. I hope that you will love yourself and others without attachment.